Could you possibly think of a more West Ham United way to start a new season and a new era than that? West Ham United 1, Aston Villa 2 at London Stadium, 5.30 kickoff on Saturday night. Two goals for Aston Villa, of course, scored by the bloke we were trying to sign for ages who picked Everton over us in Amadou Anana. And then the winner scored by the bloke we were supposedly tried to sign this summer, which fell through. He stayed at Villa and we signed Nicholas Fulkrug instead. The bloke, John Duran, was even doing crossed hammers on Instagram a few weeks ago. That's how much he wanted to swap uh, what the one Claret and Blue team in Birmingham for the biggest Claret and Blue team in the country and indeed the world. Lucas Paqueta got our consolation in the middle. The usual suspects, the Moyes Out Brigade, to suit their agenda, have been jabbering on on Twitter, going, yeah, saw some positive signs, saw some positive signs. No need to panic, everyone. No need to worry. Um, we got less points than the last time we played Aston Villa at home and drew one all, which was at the end of last season. We had less shots on target. Uh, and we're just generally rubbisher, I think, is the science. Uh, I'm joined by my mate James Jones, as I was before and after the game on Saturday in our uh, favourite pub, which will still be referred to as the secret pub. But it's becoming less and less secret <laughs> as every week goes by because it's flipping round in there now before and after kickoff, which is annoying. Uh, Jonesy, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. On Saturday, despite the result, uh, thanks in no small part to getting to see you in person again and having a couple of jars together. Um, how are you? How are you feeling? Uh, have you got over it yet? Because I, for one, had a little bit of a sore head uh, on Sunday. I had a sore, sore head this morning. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Monday morning, upset, for the it, record. Yeah, it's, it's upset me a little bit that... I've now got to an age where it's taking me longer than a, a morning to get over a night out. <laughs> I used to be all right by the afternoon, the day after. I used to be like, oh, yeah, bro, I can go again. Shake it now, up. Now, now like, I said to you, I wrote my journal this morning, think I'm going to quit drinking. Because I've, <laughs> I've, I've been in pieces and I don't really understand why. I'm only 36, I should be able to carry on. But yeah, I'm Have you had the summer off though? Or have you been hitting it like equally hard over the summer? Well, I haven't really hit been hitting it hard. Um, I've had a I had a big night. At the be, uh, I had a big night at the beginning of the month, um, mm. which also took me longer than twelve hours to go over. <laughs> um, that should have been the sign, really. But yeah, other than that, I've, you know, I've, not, I've had a relatively low key summer. So uh, maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe just that, just well, that whack a little bit. I'll be honest, mate. As I was boring the pants off with. Every uh, boring everyone's pants off with on the weekend. Uh, since I got back from the Euros, which was July the 15th, I came back. Uh, Saturday was only the second day I've had a drink. The only I had, I had a few drinks at a wedding I went to. Um, but other than that, I've basically done dry January from mid July to mid August. Um, sort of feeling all in all better, but I, I'd had two pints. On Saturday, and I was hammered. I had literally came and met you. You'd been out for a while, um, so I thought oh, I'll I'll buy two when I went up to get around in. I thought I'll get you one, your brother one. I'll buy two just so I can sort of catch up a little bit. I haven't had a beer for a while. Looking forward to the day. I was a bit later than I'd hoped. Yeah, finished that second one. It was all over the place. <laughs> so by the time we uh, eventually said goodbye to each other, a couple of hours after the. Uh, or two or three hours after the final whistle. Um, yeah, I was very, uh, very well oiled indeed. And yeah, the hundredth birthday party I had to go to on Sunday down in Winchester was um yeah, a little bit more of a of a slog than it probably would have been in the first place. I'm, I'm actually surprised that you've managed to do that because I, I'm the type of guy that just likes to have a beer in the evening, like when I'm watching TV. Mm. Like I'll always have like a like one one beer. Once I finish work, I work from home full time. So I got the boy to bed, finished cooking, sitting out for dinner. I'll have a, I'll have a beer, maybe two, mm. sometimes even three. Um, so I'm like, normally I'm having a beer, not like a beer 
Yeah, it is technically a beer a day, I suppose it is. Yeah, yeah. It feels a um, problem, maybe. Yeah, which is why it's, it surprises me that I go out and have more than three, and suddenly I'm like, I'm like a broken man. <laughs> but it is what it is. Yeah, a very good day was had by all. It was, yeah, it was very good. Very a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, nice to be back, wasn't it? Um, nice to be back in the mixer. Good to see you again. Um, what are your remaining for i mean i'm sort of you know what mate i'm gonna be honest i'm sort of accepting my role a little bit as the pariah uh, like among the fan base like you know last season you know i was jabbering on about david moyes and you know everyone's sort of quite well aware of uh of my views on the whole situation um and same as you we said didn't we on last week's podcast we said oh you know, I, I get a bit excited, but and I said I feel silly for it though because I know what's going to happen, and I'd regained my full like, as some people call it, my like doom and gloom demeanor before the game because everyone's like all buzzing, and I'm like, we're not going to get anything today. Yes, we've made some good signings. Villa got in the Champions League last season, and are like, are still riding that wave. They've had another summer to cement their already good ideas. Whereas we've decided as a club that the previous ideas were no good at all. So we've scrapped all that, got a bloke in trying to implement his new ones, which we don't know whether they're going to be better or worse yet. And a load of new players who need, nah, nah, that will be fine. Nah, we're going to win. We're going to win. I was like, I will snap anyone's arm off for a one all. And I've realised that every it's easy for some people to market it as the doom and gloom merchant. But I also think it's just going to be the, it might be that I'm the really observant, observant, good at predicting stuff and being right about football merchant. <laughs> I disagree. Um, I'd like to point out that I, for one, didn't think we were going to win. Um, I tried to remain as positive as I could, but I'm well aware that this is going to take a little bit of time to, to really click. I know Lapategui and all these like, signing eight, eight, nine players already. Um, so it's gonna gonna take some time. And I saw enough. I saw enough on Saturday to oh. go. Yeah, yeah. And I'm. No, I'm, you didn't. I've got, no, I've you got, didn't. Neither did anyone else. I've got. I've got Who's some stats. That? I've got some stats, mate. And I'm even going to compare them to when we drew with them one or at home last season, where we almost got the winner <laughs> afterwards. And <laughs> yeah, I'll show you. And I'll show you that actually, yeah, okay, we 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 lost the game, we lost the game. Um, but I don't, I don't think if if we'd have drawn that one all, Villa would have, wouldn't wouldn't have walked away and gone, oh well, that was that was a joke. Like, how the hell did we not win that game? But they would have done, they would have done because as no. well as the two goals they actually scored, they missed the easiest chance in the world, Leon Bailey, which was literally an open goal after he'd taken on the keeper, and they missed another proper sitter, like. It's easier for you to say that, but it was it'd been four one to Villa as well. That wouldn't have been much of a shock. But that's that's not because they outplayed us. I don't think they outplayed us whatsoever. I don't think they outplayed us whatsoever. I think there was there was enough signs there to show that Lopetegui's ideas are getting through to to the team. Just needs a little <laughs> bit more time. Needs a little uh, bit more yeah. time. And I'll get into the stats well, when we get into the reaction bit. Yeah, I am actually looking forward to that. In I'm terms of a comparison, and the the stats do speak to the the type. Or basically, what the the Moyes out brigade wanted from a style or or from a manager, um, a lot better in terms of possession and passes and touches and you know. Yeah. Well, I hope you're all happy. I like. Don't worry about like the points well, I, total. No, I, I, I think is though. This I knew you'd say that and go, yeah, but we, we but we got one point last year. Now we've got zero. But like, there's a complete difference between. Uh, a manager that's literally just started and has got eight new players to bed in and, you know, and clearly is still trying to get that that style across to the team and a manager that's been there for four years and doesn't like his team playing with the ball. So, like, <laughs> like there, there, there are clear, clear differences between Moyes in his full, coming towards the end of his fourth season and Lopetegui in his first game. But there are clear signs in Lopetegui's first game that things will eventually click, I think. Not for poor old Jared Bowen, who's actually stifled out of the game by this new style, whatever it is. Um, did you enjoy yourself? 
I'm flipping the Beyonce a better be yes after all the moaning you did last season about it, and you and everyone else, to be fair. Uh, did you enjoy it loads more? Were you loads happier? Because we had 53% of the ball. We had most of the ball. Yes, get in there. Go on, you irons. 53% possession. Well done. Oh, to be fair, I don't remember. I had about seven <laughs> points before the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I did have fun. I did enjoy it. It was nice to see us actually look like, like, it looks like we were allowed to play. So, like, Villa, let's us, let us have a bit of the ball, uh, which is nice. Um, it was actually 52%, not 53%. So, let's just hold all. Yeah, 53 bit. on Google, mate. So, well, Google's wrong because it's 52 on the Premier League's official website. No, so, I have some yeah. of that. But, I, I, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Obviously, didn't enjoy the result, but I enjoyed enjoyed the game. It was all right. No. We, um, uh, we got a bit of grief. Oh, just worth, worth kicking off, by the way. Jonesy, um, point of success for the We Are West Ham podcast. Uh, the exclusive interview of Harry Redknapp went out last week um, as a podcast and as a YouTube video, and uh, we clipped up a little anecdote of it from uh, about Slavin Bilic on social media. Um, just give us a bit of an update on that, James. Very positive news indeed. Well, I was totting it up this morning, and I think all in, across all platforms... 1.4 million views. Excellent news. Um, we could be closing in on 900,000 of that being on Instagram. Yeah. About half, half a million on um, TikTok. Um, and then sort of smaller numbers on Twitter and YouTube. But yeah, TikTok and Instagram. Every time, it got, there was a point on Friday evening, every time I refreshed the apps, it was like the numbers were going up in like tens and twenty thousands. It was like flying. Lots of new subscribers across all the platforms as well, which is great. Um, yep. So yeah, uh, a, a real success. We can we can safely say we've gone viral now as a podcast. Yeah, think. yeah, huge. Um, the, the the bit that did annoy me a bit, James, um, when you told me about all of those, uh, I then went, "Great, how much money have we made off of that?" Uh, and what was the answer? Uh, well, at the moment, we've now made twenty six pounds on YouTube off the back of that one, <laughs> so that's good. Um, we like that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, £26 off one and a half million views. Can't complain. Can yeah. You? So, I mean, that that is probably does kind of back up um, the, the, the point I made last week when I said we will be launching very shortly uh, a subscription service. Uh, anyone looking at us thinking, ah, you two are shysters, you must make loads of money out of that thing. Uh, yeah, sort of the, the most viral thing I think we've ever done on the podcast and we'd by a mile. Set to make 26 quid out of it <laughs> so yeah when you when you consider that our, our, the most watched video before then on tiktok for example was yeah. um i think did 12 uh 15 000 views i think yeah yeah um so and now we've made 25 quid off of 1.5 million you can just <laughs> kind of imagine how much we were making before we went viral. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you can exactly. subscribe, that'd be great. To and, put your uh, hands in your pocket. Yeah, yeah if you yeah, can yeah. pay some money, yeah, we'd really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, that was good news. Um, just a bit of an apology, by the way, on, on that note. Um, the opposition view. <laughs> well, whilst we started the season very well with the Harry Redknapp uh, stuff, the opposition view, um, I'm very... Sadly, promised you uh, Tim Wildwood, uh, very, very big friend of the podcast, BBC Sport commentator. Uh, he was out uh, doing the Olympics, um, commentating on the skateboard in the BMX, in as he does. Uh, and when he he was all set to do the podcast, uh, came back from the Olympics, all a bit of drama. And yeah, I hadn't seen his kids for three weeks, so I couldn't quite make the time in the end last week. He did his best. Uh, did Tim, but um, yeah, so very sorry to uh, to have teed it all up. And then the first opposition review of the season, we couldn't deliver, uh, but do not fear because uh, there, there will be a Crystal Palace one later this week. Don't you worry about it. Uh, anything else, James, before we get into the nitty gritty? I feel like quite a lot's happened uh, in the last week. Um, I interviewed Karen Brady. That was quite uh, that was quite a noteworthy thing. We'll have a chat about that uh, a bit later on on the podcast. Um, Harry Redknapp as well. Uh, am I missing anything? I feel like there might be something I'm missing, but um... no, we didn't. Um, we haven't signed anyone this week, which is a bit strange. Um, <laughs> no one's no one's been sold, or apparently right. Kurt Zuma's sort of 
sitting in a random hotel in the Middle East, kind of waiting to find out what to do next because he found his yeah. medical at some random Saudi club. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably because told... he's like the hell well, together. Every, as soon tank. as it was like, oh, he's heading out to Saudi for a medical, a lot of people were like, well, hopefully they just go, well, I don't know, because he's definitely yeah. going to fail it. He can barely run. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he found it, and the Saudi club went, nah, don't fancy it. Um, it must be pretty bad. So, yeah, yeah. I don't. Um, I just think it's funny though. I just told him to stay there. Just stay there. Kurt, don't bother coming back. Yeah, just in case, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Would well, you want you me know, to we... come back and play for you? No, nah, yeah. you won't, mate. We've given the armband to someone else, Kurt. No worries. <laughs> you stay there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. We didn't really cover that about the old Jarabone thing. But anyway, look. Um, that's your intro. We'll, we'll dig into the Aston Villa game in a little bit more detail next. Um, we'll do a little bit more on the, the the tickets and the concessions later, and I'll tie that in um, with my interview I did for uh, my work with Karen Brady. Um, and, yeah, we'll have a little bit of a look ahead to the Crystal Palace game. Um, glad to be back. Glad you're back with us. Um, nice to hear all of the positive comments uh, and even the negative ones, to be fair, that we've had um, over the last week or so. So buckle up for another episode of the We Are West Ham podcast. It's going to be a long season if we're going to have to read these kind of remarks all year. Um, that was a reply from at Hampshire underscore Irons, Hampshire Irons on Twitter, um, to my tweet uh, that said, if David Moyes had made those three subs last season, there'd have been a lynch mob waiting for him outside the ground after the final whistle. Um, I'd that, that tweet happened, or that tweet was written uh, in the mere minutes after... Julian Lopetegui made a triple substitution. The sort of people, the sort of thing, excuse me, people were screaming at David Moyes to do last season. You know, he's not brave enough. He doesn't make any change earlier in the game. Uh, Nicholas Fulkrug comes on to replace Mikhail Antonio. Crescencio Somerville comes on to replace Jared Bowen. And James Ward-Prowse came on to replace Lucas Paqueta. That was on 74 minutes. Uh, and five minutes later, it was, a mere five minutes later, uh, John Duran had scored to put Villa 2-1 up. I wrote the tweet out shortly after the substitutions. And I thought, oh, that's a, I don't know about that. I'm not really sure. It might be a little bit unnecessarily negative. And knowing my luck, West Ham will score in a minute and I'll look a right wally. I was like, no, no. Can't be cowardly. If that's what you think, whether we score, then you just have to take the grief. So I'll do it. I literally did it, hit send, and I looked up and Villa are running down the pitch. The ball comes across, Villa 2-1. I was like, well, I mean, seriously. Um, yeah, that's as good a place to start as any, I suppose, James. Um, I think I was annoying you and everyone we were with afterwards. by. <laughs> And everyone's like, oh, you're just going to be saying I told you so all season. It isn't that. I'm sort of playing up to it a little bit. But I, I am sort of, I, I, I just think like, it wasn't for me like this. I think it just highlighted how it wasn't terrible under David Moyes. And it's not just as easy as shutting people down high up the pitch. Because that was the only objective thing I could see that was different, really. And if I'm being honest now, sort of joking aside. We were shutting them down higher up the pitch. Um, and then, yeah, he makes these subs, which, you know, Moyes used to get a lot of stick for not being bold with his changes. Um, and, yeah, I just sort of, it, it feels very much like, you know, and I know it's not probably not going to happen straight away, and I understand that. Um, uh, and this will probably be more of a serious conversation come December. But it, it's one of those, you know what I mean, where it's just like it does sort of ram it home to a few people that it's not just as easy, like every time you scream at your computer screen, um, like, you know, in deranged fashion, even though you're a fully grown man, or type something absolutely like, you know, sort of abusive or just a bit unhinged into Twitter and, and post big angry rants where I have to go. It's not playing football manager. Like it's not just as straightforward as like, making subs or pushing up further up the pitch or whatever is it and I just I don't know that was sort of the feeling I was left with afterwards and if I'm honest I think from my point of view it's going to be a bit like that for a while 
I'm not that I'm not reveling in it. I'm not enjoying it, but it just feels a bit like, see, it was, it's not that easy. Do you know what I mean? Well, I think I think it's 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 harsh to go. Well, you know, almost I, I told you so after one game. Like I said earlier, like it wasn't going to click straight away. There were a lot of players that still still need to bed in. Um, mm. Don't forget, it's not just the new signings; it's the the original. Yeah. The original players need to get used to, you know, closing down hard at the pitch and playing a different style. And, um, so it was never going to never going to click straight away. Like, the reason why I was quite positive afterwards is that, you know, that that closing down hard at the pitch eventually, you'll see that becoming far more effective. We'll be forcing them into more um, areas, maybe, yeah. You know? And um, the stats show that actually, in comparison to last year. Um, we forced them into a lot more long balls, Villa, allowing us to sort of win the ball back. And, you know, there, there were signs that, you know, in time, if we can get it, if, they, if the players can click and they, they showed signs that they were, get, they, they were buying into the idea, then it could be it could be a success. So I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, Villa lost their first game of the season last season, 5-1 to Newcastle, and then finished 4 <laughs> You no, wheeled no. that one out about fifteen times on Saturday. Any yeah. new person that arrived at the pub, you just like true. that straight in with that line. Because it's true. Because it's true. <laughs> like one game of the season isn't going to define where we finish. It's not going to define the the failure or success of Lopetegui's reign at the club um, or any of the but players. What if we get relegated by three points. It will, it will, I don't think we will do. Um, and there was there was enough there. It, it wasn't a terrible performance. It was far better than a lot of people are giving it credit for. Yes, there needs to be a lot of improvements. I'll tell you, you come out and said that, that there are a lot of places that need to improve. Mm. Um, but I, I walked away from that ground and, and didn't feel like we just played a team that's just qualified for the Champions League or struggled against them. Like I felt like we, we went toe-to-toe with a, a very, very good side um, in a... In a, in a at a time when we're still trying to find ourselves and find this new identity. And barring a, a, a Suchek sitter that he missed right at the end, we'd have walked away with yeah. a point and you'd have been completely different. Your tone would have been very, very different. So I think I, I don't think it's the end of the world. I think it's, okay, starting a season with defeat is always a little bit annoying. You want to start with mm. a win. Really but, annoying, yeah. I think I don't think it's I think it's fine. I don't think there's I, I think I saw enough on Saturday to be to remain positive and excited about what's to come. But is that but the thing is and the tone would have been slightly I would have been pleased definitely with the result. I'd have been like few, but I texted a villa friend of mine straight afterwards and he was just like, Yeah, we, we were good for that. And that, that is the thing. Like I know it's easy to say if Suchek had scored at the end, and he definitely should have. I just watched it back, and that was proper head in hands moment. And yeah. then, yeah, then you get a good result, and it's good news. But like I say, I, I can't remember what the other one was. There was another sitter they missed. I'm pretty sure it was down your end of the pitch, um, for it, like as in where you sit. So that would be opposite the Bobby Moore end for anyone else in the ground or watching at home. Um, but the Leon Bailey one, I mean, again. Wide open at the back, takes you around a keeper. How they don't score from there. I mean, you'd be fuming, wouldn't you, if you were them? Ollie Watkins, I think it was, who was wide open as well. Um, it just, it felt like, yeah, I mean, Villa won. You weren't like, oh, blimey, what a travesty against football there. I, I thought they were, it, it, it did, you know what? It was funny. It was similar to, like, under David Moyes, weren't it? Where we would play terribly, or sorry, it was like polar opposite to David Moyes. Because we had an annoying habit, didn't we, under and David Moyes of like playing really well for the first fifteen minutes and the last fifteen minutes and being yeah. terrible in the middle, like take an early lead, then throw it away, and then throw the kitchen sink at it last fifteen. We kind of seemed to do that the other way round. It seemed like bit of a sluggish start. They score obviously, and then about fifteen minutes in, it felt it was like, oh yeah, well better sort of kick into gear here then and then we seemed to play pretty well for an hour and then the subs and then it was like oh oh right I got I scored again do you know what I mean yeah kind of but I think I I think we can't we can't compare it like for like 
no. I don't, I just no. Think there's, there's so many variables now. I mean, the only thing you can compare like for like is the actual tactics and the and the way that we've set up and the, the mm. way that we've we've performed tactically. Um, unless that show that tactically and in terms of and in relation to the style of play that a lot of fans were demanding, mm. there was there was vast vast improvements. Um, the rest of it, I you know, I I think that. I don't think that Thomas Suchek works well in that midfield in the style that we want. And I think he's better, mate, he was better than Rodriguez, though, wasn't he? I thought Rodriguez was all right. I thought <sighs> he was good. Um, oh, I think Edson Alvarez, time, Edson Alvarez remains the the key in that midfield. I think when he's back, yeah. we might see a little bit of a difference there. But Suchek was um, man of the match. And I'm not even joking. No, I don't, I'm not massively sold on him. Um, but but yeah, I just think like you know we forced Villa into more long balls than we did when we played them last year. Fifty-two percent possession. That's nice now. Um, we've. What are the other stats? Come on, impress me with some other stuff because you are good at that. Well, in terms of obviously the possession, fifty-two percent last year it was thirty-one against Villa at home. Um, two hundred and twenty-three completed passes last year. Yeah. Compared to three hundred and seventy-seven. Um, <laughs> like, and actually, I was looking at. It, I think Arsenal. Only made four more completed passes in their game against Wolves than we did against Aston Villa, and Arsenal were the greatest <laughs> okay, team in the though. entire planet. So <laughs> there's, you know, there's positives there, and I know, just don't it, care though. That's the problem. If it look, if it, I think for me, right, that it feels at the moment this season is what it must have felt like, for, and for David Moyes, we said this openly, right, and this isn't partisan one way or the other, but. With David Moyes' style of football, it has to bear fruit. You have to get results out of it or it's unwatchable, right? And I think from my point of view, I was like, you know, I enjoyed the results so much that I didn't care. We've been over this. I don't want to go over it again. But I think so for me this season, I'm going to be kind of in that position where I'm like, I don't really, unless the results are as good, I don't care. I don't care about all the... If it's if it's slowly improving and slow and we're like having loads of chances and and we, we it's just not quite happening or we're getting the balls in the right position and the final pass is off but you can see something coming to fruition that's going to work eventually then fair enough but I I sort of I need a bit more um I I and I just think the next three I, I'll need some results fairly sharpish to sort of be convinced, and it will be results as in like goals and points and chances created at least, or shots on target or something, rather than oh, I don't care how many long balls the opposition made or how many passes we make. <laughs> um, I, I I think the tone would be very very different, and we got that exact same result in the exact same performance against Chelsea. Or Liverpool. Oh, yeah, the time would Maybe be less. like, oh wow, like, what well, the things looking good actually. That's not a bad. Okay, yeah, we didn't win, but there's signs there. But instead, the times were well, much the same as last season. And yeah, okay, well, you know, we oh, it's more, more of the ball, but you know, it's it's like well, Villa are a Champions League side. So anyone that mm. thought we were going to go into that game and 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 win just because we got a new manager and eight new signings and and, and won the transfer window. Yeah. Like you're, you're lying to yourself, like you're kidding yeah. yourself. Like, it wasn't but that gonna... was loads of people, mate. It was loads of people, yeah. And it's yeah. just like, and then suddenly you, you see people go, Oh, God. bring more. I told you we should have got rid of more. It's just like, No, talking rubbish. I was, like, I was actually going to start. We're going to do that if we're going to do that all season. Oh, well, you know, we're just going to compare every, every result to what we did against the same team under, under Moyes last season, hmm. then. We might as well just pack up and go home because otherwise we're just never going to move forward as a football club if we're going to constantly compare it to the old guy. He's gone. I'm just going to let you know, mate. That's precisely what I'm going to do every single game this season. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this. Nor are, nor are the <laughs> listeners either. I can guarantee it. They're not, you got to listen to me do it. No, but there'll be there'll be a, a, a large um, majority who sort of feel like they're always silenced by the the shouty oppressive majority that is the boys out brigade um they're, they're all pro they're probably at home just thinking yeah f thank god someone's finally saying it speaking up on our behalf where others wouldn't will's not scared to get shouted down i'm not going to shout you down um 
everyone knows my stance on Moyes and <laughs> what, what my stance uh, on Moyes was towards the end. Um, but I just don't think it's going to be very healthy just to constantly be looking back. Um, <laughs> look forward. And I saw enough on Saturday suggest that looking forward is, is going to be a hell of a lot more fun than looking back. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. One thing I would say though, I, I will there <laughs> I will certainly not accept the argument. And I won't say you so much here. I don't class you as part of this group, but I will not accept the argument of what it is and what isn't healthy. Um a uh, healthy way of supporting West Ham because some some of the Moyes out brigade last season. Oh, yeah, get that. The yeah. the behaviour they were exhibiting was unhealthy. Incredibly <laughs> unhealthy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, both physically and mentally unhealthy yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh so yeah, me, I, I'm just gonna lay out there now. This podcast this season will be uh well, this is what we did against uh <laughs> that team last season. You're basically if you if you're rolling your eyes thinking, oh, I can't be bothered with this. Um, just just log in um, after we played the games against Ipswich, Leicester and Southampton because we didn't <laughs> play them last year. Although what I will do for the Leicester and Southampton games, I'll just dig out results from seasons past when we've beaten them under Moisey. <laughs> um, James, what are, you, what are your thoughts now then? This is where a thread of conversation um, after the, the weekend that we could easily have 10 points from our, just 10 points from our first 10 games. Um, uh, the, yeah, we just so it's Villa, uh, Crystal Palace away, Man City at home, Fulham away, Chelsea at home, Brentford away, Ipswich at home, Tottenham away, Manchester United at home. Um, I think that takes it to 10 games. Uh, and I was making the point that we could easily only have 10 points after that. Again, shout it down. No, you don't know what you're talking about, mate. <laughs> um, but it does feel like you know, given the pressure that would inevitably start to build and the fact we got Man City after Palace, um, uh, Palace away and then Fulham away uh, are, the, are those two games either side of, of City. They're our next three. Um, there's sort of some pressure on those, isn't there? There's Already. always pressure. Um, but it's 38 games in a season, mate. doesn't matter when you get the points. Wasn't that what you were saying last season? doesn't matter when you get the points <laughs> oh, yeah. as long as you get them. So, yeah, if you have 10 after 10, 10 games, so be it. We'll just pick up another 40 later on in the season. <laughs> once right, once you saw and I quote, clicked. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Right, coming in, James. Quick run through. Um, what, one, one point I do want to sort of point out. Um, what do you think uh, of the fact that so many of what I'll call the old guard side, I mean, Emerson's a no-brainer, so is Areola. But also starting out, you had Soufal, Bowen, Suchek, Paqueta, Kudus, Antonio, uh, Rodriguez and Kilman, the only two new signings to start the game. First of all, before I ask you what you made of the new signings overall, we'll do a quick run through those. But what, what did you make of, of that decision to only start two of the newbies? Well, he did hint, didn't he, in his pre-match presser that he was still going to make a decision there's a few players that still needed some time um and um see there were there was a hint there that he probably wouldn't start all of them and only a couple would, would make it um and I, I don't mind that I think I think when you bring in loads of players at once hmm. um and then stick them all in the starting 11 I think that's probably not great for squad morale either you've got a lot of the yeah. old guard there probably going well hang on but we've been replaced already this is getting a little bit hmm. silly um, so I think it was probably a, a mixture of uh, practical and prof like sort of professional management from from Lopetegui and just kind of slowly bending the new guys, but also with a nod to the old guard that's got us to where we are now over the last few years. Um, I wasn't when I saw it. I was I wasn't that like oh I'm surprised that Fulcrum's not starting. I'm surprised someone wasn't mm -hmm. starting. It was probably roughly around about what I expected. Um, the only Quit. The only one that did maybe surprise him was Tadebo not starting over Mavropanos, but um, that would that will come. I probably might you might even make that change against Palace at the weekend. So, um, but yeah, I, I was quite happy with it. In the, the day, those like the old guards got us here, but they you know they put us in this position. So, so yeah. Well, that's that. It's funny enough. I mean, again, you know. That that was a Moisey tactic, wasn't it? To let, let players bed in. You would rarely just throw them in at the deep end straight away. It was very much a slow intro. Unless you're Calvin Phillips. 
Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. yeah. Um, did you know? I don't know if I've I, I don't know if I've said this, um, but that the agent, Calvin Phillips' agent, uh, was demanded part of the deal was that he he started the first three games, I believe it was, between three and six. Um, the exact number eludes me because it was a while ago I was told this. Um, but yeah, that was part of the deal. And that Calvin Phillips ended up saying in a meeting with David Moyes um, that, oh, yeah, he, uh, he, he David Moyes said, Calvin Phillips was like, oh, yeah, I, I wasn't really ready. Like It was a bit of a sort of debrief after the whole disaster, after it had gone really bad. Um, and they had a meeting, the two of them. And, uh, yeah, it was understood that Phillips sort of said, oh, I wasn't really ready. And David Moyes was like, well, your agent like demanded that was part of the deal. Like We had to accept that as part of the deal. And Phillips goes, yeah, yeah, he shouldn't have done that because I wasn't ready. <laughs> Brilliant. And that's the thing. He'd done, his, he'd done his own career more damage by that, didn't he? Um, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know if I'd, uh, if I'd made that... Um, uh, I've never heard that one before. Told, so yeah, oh, no, on. yeah, I don't know if I told that tale, but um, yeah, that from a very, very reliable source, indeed. Um, yeah, it was a while ago that I heard that, but anyway, uh, looks like he's getting a move as well. Calvin Phillips, he's got got the Ipswich, yeah, he's all done. Is it done, yeah, 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 yeah. He was on the bench the other day um, from. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Anyway, I happen to agree with you on the fact that really it felt like more of a a respect to the old players to go, right, you know, I've come in, but you've done a good job for this club for a long time. So it's only right that I give you a chance to prove yourself, go out and do it. If that was the case, uh, who do you think has proved themselves and who do you think hasn't? I will start. Mikhail Antonio hasn't. Agreed. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, for me, there are two standouts and that's Kudison. Keta. Um I thought I thought Kudos at the weekend was a right handful. And we used to seeing him like that, but I thought he was especially good. Um Paqueta just being Paqueta is, you know, class. But yeah, I think they all did. The only question mark, and you've all, I've already said it, it's question mark over the way that Suchek fits in with that midfield, not over his ability. Um, but I just don't don't know how he fits in with that midfield anymore. But but yeah, I think. I don't think Antonio's probably races run now in it with him. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, no, mate. I, bench I, player. I like we've we've said for what two the last two seasons. Mate, four he, years, I reckon. His role now like, should be come off the bench with twenty five minutes to go and make an impact, and he yeah. will do that very very well. Definitely. Um, but it's got to be Fulker starting for me against Palace. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because when he come on. We do much like full Kruger didn't, you know, obviously it's, it's difficult. You only get 25 minutes or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, the Antonio race is definitely run. You're spot yeah. on with that. Um, uh, Paquette was getting a bit of grief. Could us, I thought it was one of those that annoys me a little bit where it's like he was doing good stuff. It seemed to me, but like on the halfway line, do you know what I mean? Like he's obviously, he's, he's so rapid and explosive, isn't he? Uh, and he's strong and he does well to sort of win the ball back and when he get out of tight areas. And like he was good at that, but and that's what worried me a bit. Not only but it didn't ever really come to anything, and we didn't seem to know I couldn't tell after watching that game what our attacking plan is or was. Like I know given grief, but at least under Moyes, you knew it was a counter-attacking style. It just felt Bowen was fairly ineffective. Obviously, when balls are bouncing off Mikel Antonio and going 20 yards away, um, it, it, it does make it a bit more difficult. But yeah, it just felt for me, particularly with Kudus, lots of people were impressed with him, but it just felt like lots and lots of effort for not much end product. you know what I mean? I'm not sort of slagging him for that, really. It, it, it just, like, he tried hard and he did well, but I just was just watching all this going, like, there's lots of huffing and puffing, but what are we actually trying to do here? What, what What's it going to come to? Do you know, is that fair to say that you can't really see a pattern of attack? Well, again, that's part, that's part of the players just getting used to the way, the way the manager wants them to play. 
But um, what is that? Is what I'm saying. When we've got the ball, what what is that? Well, it's clearly it's clearly pace. The fact that he's brought a player like Somerville in, who when he came on showed a little bit of promise, a little bit of pace when he came on. Bowen could us. Um, it's clearly run at the players, run at the defence, get the balls in the box. The fact he's brought a target man like Fulcrow get a ball in the box. Um, mm. And there were there were times throughout the game where Kudus did get the ball in the box. Um, obviously, final balls got, probably got a little bit better, and he, he, he'll mm. know that. But um, I saw a compilation this morning. Um, it's like four minutes long of just him against Villa. Mm. And compilations always make players look good, but the fact yeah. it was four minutes, four, the fact it was four minutes, the fact it was four minutes long, like okay, mm. well, there's you know, there was it did a lot. Um, like, one thing I did include the warm up. Sorry, include the warm up. They included the warm up, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the one thing I did notice is that actually Matty Cash gave him a a tough afternoon. Mate, Matty Cash was outstanding. Yeah, he, he was did so give good. Him a really, really, really tough afternoon. Yeah. But the fact is, like, we could have got the better him a few times. But it was a really, actually, it was a really good battle between Matty Cash and Kudus all afternoon. Um, I mean, he'll come up against worse players than Matty Cash this season. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think, yeah, okay, there were some frustrating moments where it sort of a little bit huff and puff and didn't really lead to anything, but. Um, if he can, if he can have games like that more often than not, it will be like last season. Lots of goals, lots of assists from Kudos. Maybe even more, mm. I reckon. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel a little bit odd about the whole thing. I think, uh, and I, I, I think he's good. Look, I, Harry Redknapp saying that um, there's a chance that that Kudos might leave and that we'd struggle to hold on to him this window. Um, you know, I know it's no, that certainly didn't come from anyone inside the club. Um, it's more of a sort of third party, but not that that makes it more or less uh, legitimate, really. I think if we do hold on to him, he'll, yeah, he's obviously going to be a key part of the um, of the plans. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of yet, yet, yet to be convinced about that. That's, that's what I want to see, especially if, you know, it's going to be this new style. It's attacking play and goals and chances that are going to be the real, uh, the real zinger. Um, just one last uh, quick one, Jonesy. Um, West Ham edging closer. It appears to sign in N'Golo Kante. Um, that is sorry, it's absolutely not N'Golo Kante at all. It's uh, Mohamedou Kante. I've just seen it's just popped up on my Twitter timeline. Uh, Mohamedou Kante, eighteen years old, expected to go into the. Uh, Development squad signed from Paris FC, not Paris Saint Germain. The other ones, um, yeah. So I, to be honest, if I'd have read that properly uh, and realised he was basically like another Louisiao, I wouldn't have bothered reading out. So I thought it was Ngolo. Pretend I didn't say it. Um, um, just, just quickly on that, did you notice that uh, Luis Guillermo wasn't even on the bench at the weekend? Yeah, I mean, he's got to be something behind that, I assume, isn't there? But... I mean, he's only 18, but yeah. we paid 25 million quid for him. He's not even made the bench yeah. the first game. <laughs> You'd hope there was a knock, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, what's, just quickly then, um, the new... Just give us... I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do quick ratings, right, of the new players. Uh, so I want out of 10, quick fire from you. Max Kilman. Uh, seven. Rodriguez. Seven. You are deluded. There's no way in a thousand years he was a seven. He was a four at best. Um, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Uh, Crescencio Ben Rama. So, uh, sorry, sorry, Somerville. He only got what? 15 minutes? Uh, six. James Ward Prowse. James Ward Prowse. He's not a new signing. Yeah, no, I just thought I'd catch you out. Uh, Nicholas Fulkrug. <laughs> six. Jean-Claire Todibo. Six. I genuinely... Although Todibo looked tidy. And yeah, actually, when I was looking I at think... the stats, he was on the pitch for, what, five minutes? Made seven passes, yeah. 100% pass rate, success rate. Yeah. Rolls-Royce <laughs> you know, already there. Yeah, you know, you know, did do, man. Hang on a minute. I was Rolls-Royce of a player is my phrase for Lucas Paquetta. But you know what did annoy me with Todibo, though? 
come on the pitch, obviously a bit excited, like went steaming into a foul straight away, like in a really him, dangerous he? area, wasn't he? That that was it. That was him introducing himself to East London. Wallop fans yeah. love that. Yeah, we could no. I could have done it a bit further up the pitch, mate, away from our penalty area. Yeah, but if you'd have done that, you'd have been out of position. Um, one of my mates texted me about Rodriguez um, and said, I've never seen a player uh, so so immobile and so bad with his feet. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. <laughs> oh, I, I, didn't think, <laughs> I really didn't think he was that good. Yeah, he just said absolutely no pace, uh, immobile um, and sloppy and slow with the ball at his feet. <laughs> I just I thought he was re- he looked really poor. I just thought he was like a way off the pace. I don't think he was that bad at all. No, Looking at his stats as well, they don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I I know this is news to you, James. There is more to football than stats. That's all I'll say. Yeah, but I think they they also tell a lot of the story. Hmm. By the way, <laughs> yeah. Well, the story I'm reading at the moment is that we lost the game. Um, uh... <laughs> Uh, do you know what? At least we're not in the relegation zone. That is positive news. 14th. So we're still in touching distance of the top half if we get uh, on a good little run. Um, right, James, let's have a break. Uh, we'll talk next, um, just briefly, a bit more about the tickets thing. Me and James both picked up uh, flyers at the weekend. We'll talk about that very briefly and then a bit of a look ahead to Crystal Palace before we say goodbye. My granddad took my dad, then my dad took me. That's the way it used to be, and I always hoped I'd be able to take you, son. Those are the words, James, on the front of the flyer that you and I both picked up at the weekend. Uh, Hammers United branded, uh, who I believe are the organisation that got a little bit salty with you uh, and a few others for going to the Betway Cup game and not joining in with that boycott um and it says underneath those words and, and a picture of a, of a grandfather and a, and a young kid uh, under 21 under 18 and adults over 66 must now pay full price for a new season ticket see overleaf for details uh, slightly uh, misleading that one of course um because you know uh, there are obviously some of the concessionary discounts um available there uh, like they say more detail uh, on the back and now james that story is is exactly mine right my granddad took me um or sorry my granddad took my dad and then my dad took me i used to go to football most of my upton park days were going with my dad and my granddad um it's only until recently my granddad just couldn't go anymore because he because he got on a bit um i mean we've done we've done this a lot last year right do you think um, where do we go from here like because there's been a little bit of movement from the club. Um, it didn't feel like the issue poisoned the whole debate, or sorry, the whole atmosphere at the ground on Saturday. Everyone was sort of behind the team. Um, it didn't feel too much, I'll be honest, like it was dominating conversation outside the ground either. Um where do you, what do you what do you make of it all at the moment? Where do you think we are? Where do you think we go from here? More importantly, it's difficult to tell. But the club did um, backtrack a little bit, um, yeah. introducing concessions to certain match categories. I think it was. Um, so it's like, okay, well, that's a good start. Obviously, you get a load of people responding to that game, but it's still not enough, and it's like, well. The club have made a decision and you've they've now kind of listened to you a little bit and gone, okay, well, we'll do it for this then. Um yeah. so you kind of have to all right, take a little bit, but this apparently there's still going to be a lot, a lot more talks between clubs and, and, and the fan and the fan groups. If they can get a little bit get a bit more out of the club, get them to backtrack a little bit more, then absolutely that's that's great. Yeah, I just definitely. I, I don't like I, I, I well, that's what I want to happen. But one thing that um that caught my eye on on Twitter. I think it was this morning or maybe yesterday. One mm-hmm. of the guys who was one of the leaflet guys said that he he lost count how many times people turned down a leaflet and basically said that they the whole thing that like, they didn't really care about the whole concessions problem. And he was like, there were a lot of fans that just generally don't because it's not affecting them. They don't care. 
Yeah. Um, well, I, I'll be honest, mate. And I, 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 it's not. I would just like to know. There's a, probably a lot of people like me. I haven't got kids. Yeah. I don't go like my granddad doesn't come anymore, sadly. But um, and you know, like I was saying, he he paid for his own anyway. So I, I'm, that doesn't at all mean I don't care about it because, as we said last week, you know, I, I think the particularly the like penalising people with young families and kids is is not a good thing to do and not a good strategy. And particularly if, and I haven't done the maths here, right? Okay, that I know I should. The 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 feeling or the sense is that this is only going to raise. I say only, but it's going to raise in the region of six hundred k a season. Yeah. Um, that feels low. I'll be honest. That that because right, it's going to affect. It's no, as so in up. if that that number feels low. Like I, I'm just, I I think I've heard that, so don't sort of take that as a given, right? But it feels like such a move would raise far more than that. Like sure, it it's not a game. Six hundred thousand a season. It may be, yeah, maybe it's something like that, yeah. Um, the the counter argument though to to those fans, it's not doesn't affect straight away. Is that well, down the line it probably will, right? You know, if oh, you're current, yeah, if you're currently twenty one years old, you know, I'm going to be an RMP one day. Yeah, but then give it a few more years and you start having kids, and then it is going to affect you. So, oh, well, it affects the majority of people. So, so well. Mm. I think even if even if either you don't care or it's not affecting you or it does affect you but you can still afford it, like you should still be wanting the club to make a decision of course. and yeah. and overturn it because at the end of the yeah. day, we're all fans of the same football club. We yeah. love the football club. Um and we don't want to feel like we're being shafted. No, and at quite. the moment, large a large fans portion are. of the fans feel like they're being shafted. And mm. not even feel like they are being shafted, essentially. Um, so the club have got to make they they've made a start, and I think that's good. They've yeah. they've shown that they're willing to listen. Um, they probably can go a little bit further. Just, well, down, of course. down to the fan groups to push them a little bit more. Yeah, but to, definitely. I saw I saw a lot of criticism towards the club for the backtrack that they made and the decision that they made with the concessions. Mm. And I disagreed with it. I was like, well, like this is a process, right? Just yeah. you know, like let's just like acknowledge the fact they've listened and just keep keep working at it. And I think eventually mm. we'll get to somewhere where there's a bit of a happy medium. Yeah. 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 No, I, you'd hope so anyway. I mean it, it just it just feels like an unnecessary thing. Like yeah, it just I don't but, know. I mean, look, the one thing I would say, and, and this is this is just speculation, right? You've got government um, like regulations that are coming in uh, that are going to put a stop to front of shirt gambling sponsorship, right? The Betway sponsorship at the moment is a significant lump of money, well in excess of the numbers being bandied around about what this um, what this deal will. Uh, what what this sorry concessions uh, plan will bring in for the club, right? Um, and that Betway deal comes to an end at the beginning of this season, as far as I understand. Um, and therefore, because of the regulations coming in, wh which now the Labour government have been confirmed, that's only you know solidified um, the fact that regulations like that are going to come in and that the you know the football regulator is going to be more empowered rather than less which they it would have been the opposite probably under the conservative government um so it that i'm not saying this definitely i don't know but bookmakers is what's sort of called a bookmaker tax there's a reason that so many football clubs are linked to bookmakers sponsorship wise is because they're very cash rich. They've got lots and lots of money. They're very financially successful businesses. Um, this isn't, uh, you know, so it, it may be, I don't know this for sure. I'm generally just speculating, but it may be and likely is that there is going to be a reasonably chunky hole or at least a deficit to be made up in the finances of all clubs who have previously and recently relied heavily 
on bookmaker sponsorship. This is, uh, and that is all just musings of my own, right? I, I, I've got nothing, no insight. Um, and I'm not saying what I will say is I'm not saying that that, oh, well, all right, then just make the fans pay for it. Not at all. But, you know, like James was saying, there, the, it feels like there's going to be a few more avenues of commercial. Um, West Ham are going to have to make create a few more avenues of commercial viability or there's going to have to be a few more income streams is is, is likely what I imagine the the case is. Um, I don't think it's right that the fans get targeted at all. And I find this thing particularly galling. Um, and if it's the amount of concession that's been reduced, isn't it, from mm. 50 to... Uh, 25%, I, I believe. Um, and I look, there's always been season ticket price rises, right? Um, you, you kind of expect those. And if I'm honest, that's, I think I'd prefer it to happen. Um, I don't, I don't hate reducing the, the concessions. I, I think what you got to do, right? If, 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 if it's you, whether you're affected by this or not, just as a fan, if you listen to this debate, what would you do if you were a club, right? And if it was me in this instance, as I've said, and I know it might not be popular, but I have had a couple of messages, I'll read those out in a bit, um, who have supported this and say I totally understand and I appreciate those of you who have got in touch, is that I don't hate the, um, you know, reducing the OAP discount, to be fair. Uh, but but so by all means reduce that from 50 to 25 or reduce it a little bit more than that if you have to but keep the kids one that's the one that really is rankling with me at the moment mm. and then just apply uniform price rises as you do anyway and let's be honest like most people stomach those don't they i know it's all there's up in arms if it's like but it, it's normally sort of what five percent ish something like that which when you're if you're already paying out between six fifty and twelve hundred quid, which I think is the, I think mine went up like thirty quid this year or fifty. Yeah, quid and, and it's, right. look, I'm not saying it's not a lot of money, and times are tough at the moment, and have been for a long time for lots of people in this country. Um, so I know those amounts of money do make a difference, but what I find, I just think it would be an easier PR thing. This feels like an unnecessary war to go into. Um, yeah, doing it so oddly when you could yeah uh, uh, and doing it uh, going after the kids as well i think's the one i think it would have been met with far less backlash if it was just oap tickets if i'm mm. honest um, i agree just have, have you got any brief thoughts james just while i find these messages because i did appreciate the messages we got um over the last week i mean for, from the from the sponsorship point of view i think yeah I think you you've probably you probably got to something on that yeah you know, there's going to be a bit of a hole in the finances for the next season um but there's 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 other ways that you can try and fill that gap as a, um instead of going after the fans yeah I think, yeah you know what, what, what do you think about this then James uh, this is from Jim Odie right um Shout out to Jim. Uh, he emails us most weeks, uh, which we love, of course. Um, and I, I particularly, I was really interested. I'm always interested to read read his thoughts and feelings. And it does, uh, you know, it sort of shapes a lot of the, the conversations Jonesy and I have, maybe away from the pod, but but also sometimes on it. This is from Jim. Hi, guys. I've just uh, uh, come across this week's podcast um, and the issue with concessions. First of all, just to be upfront, I had my first season ticket as a 16 year old when concessions had not even been thought of. That said, I think the cost of the ticket for a year then was 14 quid. When I started going again in 1999 with my son and daughter sharing a ticket, there were concessions, although I cannot be certain. I'm pretty sure there were around that time because me and my cousin used to go um, around that age. Uh, and there definitely were cheaper tickets then. Uh, but I've certainly now reached an age 
um, no, I've now reached a certain age and am currently on a concession ticket. I agree with James that the lack of concessions for children is outrageous. I'm pretty sure I said that, Jim, but, uh, you know, give us both credit because we both feel the same. <laughs> uh, our season ticket group has grown over the years following the birth of um, one member of my family's children and the boys concerned are now 23 and 20, and they've definitely benefited from the concessions. And there's half a chance that they may not have become supporters without the concessions because they might not have always been able to afford to, to come tickets for their parents. I have three grandchildren uh, and one of the joys I'm looking forward to is to take them to the game. But uh, will I be able to afford it? Um, uh, I've sat with the same people for 25 years, not having known them before. We were sat next to each other at Upton Park and we all moved to the London Stadium together. I think we we're in band three in the upper tier. Now the club has said that only, the only concessions would be in the lower bowl. So am I now to be a leper? That's actually wrong, Jim. The the, the band five and six seats are the ones right up in the gods. Um, but he, what his point is here, James, that, you know, fans are, that would that mean wherever I can get a, uh, a concession that I now have to, um, move from the guys I've shared experiences at football with for 25 years. Well, that's outrageous. Um, yeah, I, you know, it you, you goes on a little bit more. Jimmy just says, I'm not sure what the answer is, uh, and I don't remember seeing as many kids for a quid games anymore, um, which used to be quite a regular feature uh, at Upton Park. Um, but basically, as an OAP, I can understand taking our concessions, as you said, Will. Uh, because we are paying for ourselves, but removing the kids one seems so wrong on all levels when they'll be the future fan base of the club. Best wishes, uh, Jim. And he says, says, P.S. As a chartered accountant, I did chuckle when James had to explain what P&L was to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to sort of go on about this too much, James, but it feels like Jim kind of echoes our sentiments, really. And and perhaps there is a middle ground to be found, and, and perhaps it's the um, it's the, the the going after the kids that's affecting people the most. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's just similar thoughts from Jim. Um, funny enough, on the kids kids for a quid comment, um, Bournemouth's cup game against Bournemouth has been announced yeah. as kids for a quid. Brilliant! I can't believe it. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it earlier. So yeah, that's good. Um, but yeah, I I think everyone feels the same. Like even if you're one of those guys that said to one of the guys coming out of the leaflets, oh, I don't really care. Like actually, you, they probably do, hmm. but because it's probably been kind of almost lost in translation with, oh, it doesn't really affect me, so I don't need a leaflet, mate, because it doesn't yeah. really affect me. Um, so yeah, everyone obviously. I'm, all, I'm If if you if you are in favour of making kids pay adult prices to go and watch a game of football. Or young then, parents. Or young, young parents. parents then, pay. yeah. Mm, questionable. Yeah. So, no, yeah. But I totally agree. Yeah. And I always say that about politics when people go, oh, yeah, I don't care about this particular issue because it doesn't affect me. It's like, yeah, but like that, you can't have that attitude. You can't have that mm. selfish attitude because you're in a society and it's just similar thing with, with, West Ham fans, isn't it? Like, you know, learn and form an opinion. Um, a similar thing with, with West Ham fans, really. I, I don't like that. Oh, it doesn't fit me, so don't bother. It'd be a horrible world to live in if everyone just thought that. Uh, just one more message, Josie. Uh, Paul Cumberworth. Welcome back, guys. Just started listening to uh, the new season's pod, uh, and I was hoping for a bit more enthusiasm, lads. Uh, my prediction is sixth and full crew to get into double figures and get 15 goals. Um, he did say, I'll be in the secret pub from 3 p.m. Um, as I'm heading up from Nutsford. Uh, may see you in there. Uh, we didn't see you in there, Paul, actually. I don't know if you saw us. Uh, I'm going to be spending the majority of my time in Perth, Australia from December. So it'll be typical if we have a mint season. Uh, still, I'll be watching in the uh, the late hours and the early hours of the morning. So hopefully we can have a great season and maybe I'll fly back for a cup final or two. Good to have you back, lads. Uh, come on, you irons. Cheers, Paul. Thanks very much, Paul. And thanks very much to everyone else who got in touch um, over the last week or so. We appreciate it very much. I hope you're following us um, on a new platform this week. If you're not, make that your mission. I know I ask for these every now and then. Um, we've got a TikTok. We've got a YouTube channel. Uh, we've got a Twitter page. We've, of course, got the podcast. Do me a favour. If you think of one of those, uh, that you don't follow us on, 
just one, all right? Just go and follow us on one platform that you don't follow us already. This is basically the end of the podcast, so you can afford to get your phone out now um, and go onto another platform that you don't currently follow us on, TikTok, Twitter, or YouTube, and go and subscribe or follow. Or Instagram. Uh, to one of them. What do you say? And Instagram. And Instagram, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we would, uh, we would appreciate it very much. Um, right, James, just quickly, before we say goodbye, um we'll have a crystal palace opposition view later this week um yeah i uh what what do you think i'm a, i'm a little bit nervous but i don't want to end the pod on a um on a miserable note well as long as it doesn't end as long as we're not four nil down after 20 minutes or whatever it was then um then there's progress right <laughs> yeah so i mean they lost to brentford they were robbed by that dodgy decision that should have yeah. as a free kickstand, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think there'll be more changes to the starting eleven. I think we'll start betting yeah. in some of those signings. Um, I, I think Tadebo will start, um, and maybe Fulcrog. I don't know. I, can't, I don't think some of it will start over Bowen or, or Kudus. No. Um, but but yeah, I think we'll start seeing some of those new signs. Pro, pro, maybe even Wan Bissaka as well. Um, obviously he didn't get on against Villa. We might see him instead of um. Sue Fowl more defensive away from home potentially. Um but yeah I'm I'm going back to his old club of course. Yeah I'm looking forward to it. I think uh, I'm looking forward to it more than I was last year. But yeah uh I think I think yeah just bit bit of patience Will bit of patience. It's, it's all <laughs> gonna be okay. It's all gonna be fine. well if if we win I'll be in a I'll be in a thoroughly good mood next week because that'll be nice. Otherwise you're three games in and you haven't got a single point because let's be honest, this is right off the city one now. Um, and that, and that sort of becomes a bit smelly then, then you give yourself a bit of a chunky old mountain to climb and some, some tricky games coming up, but, um, yeah, we need a feel good factor. And I also feel weirdly confident going to play palace. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, look, I did, um, promise actually we'd chat about, um, my chat with, Karen Brady, but uh, perhaps we'll do that as a as a separate pod, James, or a chat for another time. Um, yeah, it's not a uh, not a pressing issue. Just I thought it might be interesting for everyone at home um, to sort of listen about uh, yeah what that was like. But um, perhaps we'll do that as a separate one. Uh, we've got a couple of international breaks coming up, so we might do it then. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening, everyone. Any final thoughts, James? Before we go, um, final thoughts. Just that. I'm going to echo what I said a minute ago, mate. Patience. There are, yeah. There's a there's a lot of positivity, um, and yeah, it's going to it's going to happen. Lopetegui is going to deliver us some fantastic, fantastic moments. I can feel it in my bones. Uh, what's the score going to be at Palace then? Four uh, one Palace. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no, I, like I, it. I think I think it'd be tight. Uh, I'm going to go two one West Ham. Yeah, all right, mate. All right, yeah, I'll have some of that as well then. Um, I'm sort of, I don't really mean it, but let's, let's try and uh, inject some positivity. Look, thank you very much for listening, everyone. Uh, thanks for messaging if you have this week. Um, social media platforms, I mean, you can find us fairly easily. We are underscore West Ham is our Twitter handle. We are West Ham Pod on Instagram. You can email us like Paul and Jim have done at we are West Ham Pod at gmail.com. Uh, we're on Instagram, like I said. Sub search We Are West Ham Podcast on YouTube. If you haven't already watched the interview with uh, Harry Redknapp, go over to our YouTube channel. That is proving very popular indeed. A bit more of an evergreen one, so uh, don't worry that it, it's out of date. It's not. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel while you're there. Go on. And even if you haven't got a YouTube account already, it doesn't take very long. You can link it to your Google account if you've got a Gmail email address or it takes like literally 30 seconds. So log yourself in. Uh, and subscribe to the We Are West Ham podcast. That'll be very friendly and helpful indeed. Uh, West Ham United 1, Aston Villa 2. Uh, the fan base still split, it appears. Um, some people full of excitement based on something they've seen that I certainly haven't. Um, but we did have more of the ball. So <laughs> that I'm told, according to my learned friend, James Jones, is something to celebrate. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for all your messages. Crystal Palace away Saturday at three o'clock. We'll have an opposition view for you later this week. West Ham are massive up the hammers, and we'll speak to you then. <laughs> <laughs>